Hi guys. It is a gray, gloomy, pretty yuck day here. We have made it to the winter of 2021-2022. Uh, the fall of 2021 has fallen. Goodbye to the fall of 2021 and here comes the last few days of this year. And uh, as we wind down the year, uh, I'm thrilled to see we have the, the latest uh, study from the never-ending debate. Uh, what killed the megafauna? What or who killed the big animals? And you, we all know uh, my opinion on what killed the big animals, the little animals, all the animals in between. It is one animal. But anyway, let us look at the latest uh, research coming in, being published in fizz.org. I want to thank Sultan Bev for sending me this article from fizz.org. <clears throat> now, this one is not looking at the Western Hemisphere. You know, every time you hear about the megafaunal extinctions, 95% of the argument is centered on what happened in what is now, uh, you know, the Americas, particularly North America. Like, there were no megafaunal extinctions preceding it or coming after it. Like, the only megafaunal extinction in history was the one, you know, about 12 or 13,000 years ago uh, when all the animals around here died out, which, you know, you, you can have some debate about climate change and whatnot, but but people forget is already uh, all of the megafaunal extinctions going on everywhere else. And we're going to center on Israel, what it looked like in Israel in this particular study from Tel Aviv University <clears throat> reaching the conclusion early humans hunted the largest available animals to extinction for one and a half million years. A groundbreaking study by researchers from Tel Aviv University tracks the development of early humans hunting practices over the last one and a half million years as reflected in the animals they hunted and consumed. The researchers claim that at any given time, early humans prefer to hunt the largest animals available in their surroundings, which provided the greatest quantities of food in return for a unit of effort. There you go. Uh, it's the same today as it was then. In this way, according to the researchers, early humans repeatedly overhunted large animals to extinction or until they became so rare that they disappeared from the archaeological record and then went on to the next size, improving their hunting technologies to meet the new challenge. The researchers also claim that about 10,000 years ago, when animals larger than deer became extinct, humans began to domesticate plants and animals to supply their needs, and this may be why the agricultural revolution began in the Levant in, in Israel, to, in modern-day Israel, at precisely that time. And I, you know, I've never really thought about this, but this is certainly an interesting, uh, certainly an interesting hypothesis. N and never really thought this through, that we stopped being hunters and gatherers when we had already thrown everything in the stew pot. And when there was nothing left to eat, we either had to grow it ourselves or, or stop eating. So we learned how to, this, this could be where the real problem began. Anyway, the study was conducted by Professor Ron Barkai and Dr. Miki Bendor, uh, blah, 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 
um, from the uh, University of Tel Aviv. Uh, their paper was published in the journal Quaternary Science Reviews. The study, unprecedented in both scope and time span, presents a comprehensive analysis of data on animal bones discovered at dozens of prehistoric sites in and around Israel. Findings indicate a continual decline in the size of game hunting by humans, hunted by humans as their main food source from giant elephants one to one and a half million years ago down to gazelles 10,000 years ago. According to these researchers, these findings paint an illuminating picture of the interaction between humans and the animals around them over the last one and a half million years. Professor Bakai notes that two major issues presently addressed by prehistorians worldwide. What caused the mass extinction of large animals over the past hundreds of thousands of years? Over hunting by humans or perhaps recurring climate changes? And what were the driving forces behind great changes in humankind, both physical and cultural, throughout its evolution? Professor Barkai says that, quote, in light of previous studies, our team proposed an original hypothesis that links the two questions. We think that large animals went extinct due to overhunting by humans and that the change in diet and the need to hunt progressively smaller animals may have propelled changes in humankind. In this study, we tested our hypothesis in light of data from excavations in the southern Levant covering several human species over a period of one and a half million years. Uh, this gets a, uh, a little technical. Um, okay, so they're looking at these excavations going back until 1932 provide a unique sequence of findings from different types of humans over the one and a half million year period. Um, this, all right, uh, blah, blah, blah. Professor Myrie says that, quote, our study tracks changes at a much higher resolution over a considerably longer period of time compared to previous research. The results were illuminating. We found a continual and very significant decline in the size of animals hunted by humans over one and a half million years. For example, a third of the bones left behind by Homo erectus at sites dated to be about a million years ago belongs to elephants that weighed up to 13 tons, more than twice the weight of the modern African elephant, and provided those humans with 90% of their food. The mean weight of all animals hunted by humans at that time was three tons and elephant bones were found at nearly all sites up to 500,000 years ago when, of course, they were hunted to extinction. So, continuing this explanation, starting about 400,000 years ago, the humans who lived in the region early ancestors of Neanderthals and Homo sapiens appear to have hunted mainly deer along with some larger animals weighing almost a ton. Finally, in sites inhabited by modern humans from about 50,000 to 10,000 years ago, 
approximately 70% of the bones belong to gazelles, an animal which weighs no more than 20 to 30 kilograms, you know, around under 100 pounds. Um, blah, blah, blah. Okay. Jacob uh, Demblitzer says that, quote, our next question was, what caused the disappearance of the large animals? A widely accepted theory attributes the extinction of large animal species to climate changes through the ages. To test this, we collected climatic and environmental data for the entire period covering more than a dozen cycles of glacial and interglacial periods. This data included temperatures uh, and rainfall and vegetation, a range of statistical analyses correlating between animal size and climate participation and environment revealed that climate and climate change had little, if any, impact on animal extinction. One more time, climate and climate change had little, if any, impact on animal extinction. Close quote. Dr. Ben Dorr says that, quote, our findings enable us to propose a fascinating hypothesis on the development of humankind. Humans always preferred to hunt the largest animals available in their environment until these animals became very rare or extinct, forcing the prehistoric hunters to seek the next down in size. As a result, to obtain the same amount of food, every human species appearing in the Southern Levant was compelled to hunt smaller animals than its predecessor and consequently had to develop more advanced and effective technologies. Thus, for example, why spears were sufficient for Homo erectus to kill elephants at close range, modern humans develop the bow and arrow to kill fast running gazelles from a distance. Close quote. <clears throat> Professor Bakari concludes that quote, we believe that our model is relevant to human cultures everywhere. Moreover, for the first time, we argue that the driving force behind the constant improvement in human technology is the continual decline in the size of game. Ultimately, it may well, well be that 10,000 years ago in the Southern Levant, animals became too small or too rare to provide humans with sufficient food, and this could be related to the advent of agriculture. In addition, we confirmed the hypothesis that the extinction of large animals was caused by humans who time and time again destroyed their own livelihood through overhunting. We may therefore conclude that humans have always ravaged their environment, but were usually clever enough to find solutions for the problems they had created, from the bow and arrow to the agricultural revolution. The environment, however, always paid a devastating price, close quote. And we have the airboat putting the exclamation point on the environment, always paying a devastating price wherever humans have set their feet, hands, brains, Spears, airboats, bulldozers, fossil fuels. 
anyway, I, I, I know that, uh, that people like to cling to the myth of the noble savage. They just don't want to let it go. Humans are humans. We have always been humans. We are bloodthirsty savages. There is not one thing noble about a human. From Homo erectus, Neanderthals, uh, Homo sapien, whoever, humans are humans. Uh, anyway, but uh, we will see who has the last laugh. The humans or the environment that has always paid the devastating price wherever we go. And with that, I want to thank fizz.org throwing more fuel on the fire. Uh, anyway, I've got to wrap this up and uh, go slog through the mud to uh, spread some more carnage in the kitchen. Bye, guys.